Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you are watching the first live daily photography show on YouTube on photography. I think I said the photography part. One of these days I'll get that. No, I'm not going to ever get that down. That would be boring. So, uh, hey, thanks for tuning in live. For those of you that are watching live, if you're not watching this live, then do come back and watch this live sometime every weekday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. It's always fantastic to see the live audience, see everybody in here saying good morning and hello and good evening, depending on where they're tuning in from and to hear where people are coming from. It's just uh, it's just really cool. It's just kind of awesome. All right, guys. So today's uh, today's photo moment is a very, very simple, brief one. This came up in a question that I saw in some of my comments about the GH5 videos, and I realized this expands beyond the GH5. But the question was, apparently on previous cameras, not apparently, it's true, on earlier cameras, some camera models, when you switch between mechanical shutter and electronic shutter, and this is for still photography, obviously, right, because you can't shoot mechanical shutter for video. When you switch between mechanical and electronic, you dropped from uh, 12-bit to 10-bit. So you'd get 12-bit photos, 12-bit RAW files when you're shooting mechanical shutter and only 10-bit when you're shooting electronic shutter. And I thought, oh, could that be so? And so I dug into it a little bit and it turned out oh, it used to be that way. That's true. It used to be. But the GH5 does not have that problem. In fact, that problem has not existed since problem, limitation, technological advancements, whatever you want to call it, since the GX8. So every camera released since the GX8, which was released in, according to my notes here, oh crap, where'd it go? I think it was August of 2015. So every Lumix camera released since August of 2015 does not have that limitation. Whether you're shooting mechanical shutter or electronic shutter, you're still getting your full 12-bit file. So if that's what you came here to find out, there's your answer. That's all you need to know. You can go. Um, but I'm going to just go into a little bit about mechanical uh, versus electronic shutter. Now, we did do a video on this earlier once, uh, a little while ago. We'll link to it here. And uh, that video talked about some of the differences and showed the results, especially in regards to fast action, which was really kind of a cool thing to see. My sample photo that I had in there is propeller spinning, and that propeller is just like this big, jumbly, funky mess in the electronic shutter, which is really kind of cool. Um, I guess looking at the comments on here, I love you guys. Someone saying, what idiot disliked before the show even began? Thank you, Sully. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, that is just hysterical. Um, and all sorts of folks watching live. And sure, okay, good. So let's uh, let's take a look at the, the difference here. So first of all, this is a GX8. So this would be the first camera that had the 12-bit uh, through electronic and mechanical. And first, let's just make sure we understand the difference here. Let's take a look at the camera here. We're going to go into the camera settings, jump into the camera settings, and in photography mode, so not in video mode, you'll see at the top you have the camera icon. And you go to that, and on the GX8, it's page 5 of 8. It, where it actually lands is going to depend on your camera model. But we see this thing called electronic shutter. And right now it's set to off. You can turn it on or you can put it on automatic. And in general use, leaving it on automatic is a really good idea. Because what happens is it will automatically shift as it as the camera needs to get into super high shutter speeds. So if you get over an eight thousandths of a second shutter speed, that's the limit of what the mechanical shutter can do. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's the same on the GH5, although I don't actually know, but I'm pretty sure. If you get above eight thousandths of a second, then it has to switch into electronic shutter mode, and you can get up to like I don't know, sixteen thousandths or maybe thirty—I don't know—crazy high uh, shutter speed numbers, but only in electronic mode. Also, on the, some of the newer cameras, and I, I don't know offhand which model number started this, but certainly the GH five and a couple of uh, cameras before that, there was a there's this problem in the industry with something called shutter shock. And it's something that happens with mirrorless cameras. And it's kind of the same thing when you have your mirror flapping up and down on mirrored cameras, but on shuttered cameras, it occurs at a different, different reasoning, but it's the same kind of idea where you can get a vibration that is caused by the shutter that can show up in the picture. Now, this is one of those things that really only shows up for pixel peepers and really you gotta look really close to see it. But it is an issue. It, it absolutely is an issue. And so what Panasonic has done is they've written into the cameras when you're in automatic mode, when it hits that finite range of shutter speed, it'll automatically switch to electronic shutter so you don't have that problem. Now, you can't shoot electronic shutter if you're shooting strobe, so it's not going to apply then. But um, if you are just shooting out and about shooting, if you leave it in automatic, it will go into electronic shutter during that narrow range where shutter shock can occur and then get out of it for everything else of course, and then it goes back into it when you get into this really high shutter speed. So, so there's that. Okay, so that's why generally you want to leave it in auto, but I'm going to put it into manual right now just so I can control it. So we're going to turn it off, and then let's take a look at the camera up and close, and let's get the lens off of here. And let's make sure here we're sure we're in focus. A quick little focus check on there. There we go. So mechanical shutter, just like you would expect. 
you see the shutter, right? And on a mirrorless camera, because there's no mirror, that means the shutter has to be open all the time so the light can hit the sensor so that you can see it through the viewfinder, right? Through your viewfinder or on the LCD on the back. So that means for the picture to be taken, the shutter has to close to kind of reset things, open and then close again to do the exposure and then open again so you can see the sensor. So if you were to watch this in super slow motion, you would see that open and close twice, which is crazy. You can't see it here. Um, I even tried doing it on with my iPhone, shooting it at the 240 frame per second. Couldn't do it. Um, so anyway, so you can't really see it, but that's what's happening. Okay, now, so now if we go into electronic shutter mode, so let's go back to here. It's all white because the lens is off. Let's go to electronic shutter and turn this on and go back to the view here. Now, when I take a picture, it doesn't sound like anything happened because the picture's being taken without the shutter moving. So it's silent, but it is taking pictures. Now, just because I know some people you know, tend to, they want proof in the pudding, you want to be able to see it. Let me put this lens back on. Come back, there we go. It's hard to do this backwards. Okay, lens on, and I'm going to close the aperture down. So you can see there, you can see the aperture. Okay, you see the aperture ring in there. Now, when I take a picture, you see the aperture opened and closed, and it does that. I actually don't know why it even bothers to open and close, but it does. So that's how we know that it's it's taking that picture in there. And then, of course, if we switch back into mechanical shutter, so I'm not going to put it up on the screen. I'm just going to turn it on. There we go. Turn off electronic shutter. That are obviously there now. You hear the shutter happening as well. But that's one of the crazy things, too, in electronic shutter is how quiet it is. It makes zero noise. And if you're shooting wide open and your lens isn't, um, the aperture isn't moving, then it is purely silent, 100% silent, which is really kind of cool. Okay, uh, let's see, lots of comments flying by. Let me just go back here, scroll up here a little bit and see what I might be missing. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Burns Tech, I'm not going to read your comment completely, but uh, Burns Tech says, speaking of cameras, I've been seeing a bunch of videos of people getting all excited, we'll leave it at that, over Sigma lenses using a speed booster, but no mention of which speed booster. So which speed booster do I get? So, uh, and some people are, are responding to that. Sully says the Mark V, check your channel, did a video on it. That's fantastic. I, because I know there's been a lot of questions about using the Metabones speed booster on the GH5. And just roughly the Metabone speed booster is a thing you put between your camera and other lenses, not micro four third lenses, but Sigma, Canon lenses, I think some other manufacturers. And not only does it allow you to use this other glass, it also adds light. I honestly, it's like what science mystery, I don't really get it. Um, but somehow or another, it gives you an added stop or stop and a half of light. I have reached out to uh, Metabones, the company. I have not heard back from them yet, but I've reached out to them to see if we can talk about whether, what the compatibility is with the GH5. Are there any concerns, issues, any updates coming, or is whatever's out there today going to work? And uh, make sure I can get a unit. I can get a unit from BNH, but I want to talk to the Metabones folks first and make sure that we are completely compatible before I do any kind of video demo on it. There's no point in doing a video on something when the product's going to be updated. Yeah, so, um, so that is going to come. For those who are interested in that, I've been getting a lot of interest in that, which I find really interesting because I've never even worked with one. But that's great. People want to know. I will do my best to to get into it. Um, Jason's saying, why can't you shoot strobe with electronic shutter? That is a really good question. Okay, so here's what happens when uh, when you shoot strobe. When basically a strobe, the light comes on, shutter opens, shutter closes, light turns off. With uh, electronic shutter, the strobe would have to be a much faster pulse. That's part of it. But I think that challenge, I think, can be overcome. The bigger problem is that the is the way that the image is recorded to the sensor. The image is recorded drawn line by line. And because of that, with a flash, it, to get into those extremely high speeds of, of, um, of light, you get into this pulsing thing. It's like when you get into high speed flash, even with a sh mechanical shutter, forget electronic shutter, high speed flash, mechanical shutter. So over 250th of a second. What's happening is the camera is the flash is pulsing at an exceptionally high rate. It just looks like a single flash to the human eye. But if you look at it on an oscilloscope, you would see it pulsing at an insanely high rate. And this has to do with um, mechanical shutter. God, we're really getting into the weeds here. But a mechanical shutter, when you're over the maximum flash sync shutter speed, it doesn't open and then close. It starts to open and then starts to close before the shutter uh, completely open. So you end up with a strip of recording. And so with a flash, what happens is you end up with a dark band because the flash has illuminated part of the scene, but not all of the scene. With a high speed sync, 
yeah, high speed sync flash, it's pulsing. And so it's basically flashing again and again and again and again as it moves down. Timing has to be exceptionally accurate, of course, for it to work, but it does. And Canon, Nikon, Lumix, Olympus, they all do it. They all do high speed shutter sync, which is really cool. It doesn't work in electronic shutter though, even though you have that high pulse rate because of the scan lens. Eventually, Digital sensors will will very likely switch to something called global shutter, where global shutter, it is recorded all at once, just like a mechanical shutter would be. There was some discussion about why we aren't there yet. It was kind of inside baseball for me. I didn't fully understand it, um, but it is something that technologically will come, and it's not just Lumix. It's like everybody will be doing this eventually, but we're not quite there yet. The industry isn't quite there yet. I know there are some global shutter cameras out there, um, and I do not know anything about them, why they have them, everybody else doesn't. I just, this is out of my realm, but that is essentially why you can't do strobe with electronic shutter. Okay, um, let's see here. Um, let's see what I'm missing is saying mechanical only. Um, so am I right in saying the mechanical only of use with fast moving subjects the rest of the time just keep on electronic? Um, ben, I, I, there are advantages and disadvantages to electronic and mechanical. One of the biggest disadvantages of electronic other than you can't use strobe is the, because they're written line by line and not all at once, if you have fast moving subjects, you can get leaning. Like if, the easiest way to rep replicate this is to get your iPhone out, get in the car, not where you're driving, driving down the road and take a picture of close up trees or um, power poles, lamp posts, anything like that, anything vertical. And you'll see the picture, it leans. That's the easiest way to comprehend what's happening because it was drawn line by line. But by the time, you know, the, the if the tree trunk or whatever is doing this relative to the camera, what it was drawing here, and then as it moved, it drew, 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 drew the lines. You end up with this angled line. Um, but mechanical shutter does allow you to do the strobe thing. Um, are there any other disadvantages other than the fast moving to using electronic shutter all the time? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I can't really think of any. If you guys are watching, it, I might be. I feel like I'm missing something. Are there any reasons other than strobe photography to not use electronic shutter all the time? I like the sound of the shutter, but um, that's a really good question. So I, I'm sure we'll get some comments going on here for the live chat. This will happen in real time for those watching later. By all means, please do add some thoughts. I'm, I'm sure there's something that I'm missing and it's just completely escaping me right now. Uh, does the sensor not use global shutter when it's using mechanical shutter? Yes. So Houston, that, this is something that I have had, I've asked Panasonic about this. Why is it that when you're shooting mechanical shutter, is it not writing line by line? Is it in a, sen in a sense global shutter, although it's not called that? Unfortunately, the person I asked was one of these super techie engineers and he gave me this explanation that just made this much sense to me. So I need to go back into that because it is an interesting question of why don't you have that same problem with the same sensor when you're in mechanical mode? I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. But you know what? This is a really good question. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some more research on that and I'll turn that into a photo moment in the future. Uh, okay. So let's see here. Uh, anything else? Um, nope. I think that was it. That was all the questions. I think I did everything I wanted to show in here. Did the mechanical shutter, make it a go clickety click. You saw all that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. So the answer to the, the question of what the show was supposed to be all about, you have 12-bit recording in mechanical and electronic shutter from the GX8 on up. So that's the GX8, GX85 and 80, the G80, and I think G85, I think G80, 85, I think those are the numbers in Europe and US. So anyway, so the GX8, there's a bunch of eights in here, GX8, GX85, GX80, and now the GH5. I believe those are the four. There might have been another model that slipped in there that I'm just like totally unaware of, but those are the four primary models or lines that have uh, both eight and, uh, uh, sorry, have 12 bit shutter, whether you're shooting mechanical or electronic. 12 bit shutter doesn't already. 12 bit recording, whether you're shooting mechanical or electronic shutter. And like I said, the GX8 was out in August of 2015. So basically, if you bought a camera from late 2015 onwards, you're 12 bit all the way through. Okay, that's it. We're going to call it there. No other comments coming up. So that's awesome. And um, Runky, you're late. I'm sorry, but you can go back and watch the recording afterwards. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>